did you know your heart beats over 100,000 times a day? That's about 42 million times a year. Wow! Ouch. Next stop is your heart and how it can be helped by one of these. It seems totally bizarre that taking a patient's vital signs could be helped by a car. So I'm heading off in the fast lane to meet the motors. And I'm starting with a pit stop on the wards to meet Matt, who's just had a heart operation. You've got a lot of different monitoring going on here at the moment. Can we see how many wires are on your chest? Matt is wired up to a monitor to check his vital signs. Vital signs are important bits of information about a patient, such as oxygen levels and heart rate. Are you allowed to unplug yourself at all? What I have to do is I have to get my nurse. They uh, will take this off. Doctors and nurses write down Matt's vitals by hand on a chart. This system's time-consuming for the staff and, more importantly, uncomfortable for Matt. So, at the moment, for you, basically, leaving the bed is a real hassle. Yeah. Chris, this is where the cars come in. In Formula One, monitoring systems have gone up a gear. This is Dr Adam Hill. He's the chief medical officer at McLaren and works out how Formula One technology can be used in hospitals. What a cool job. So how much is a Formula One car like a human being? Well, Formula One cars are incredibly complex devices. They have an engine, a bit like our heart. They have a need to breathe, a bit like our lungs. And they're incredibly intelligent. Oh, just like me. And the healthier the car, the faster it goes. So just like a patient, its vital signs are monitored. We use little gadgets like this that collect information at up to 960,000 times every single second from a single sensor. Wow, that is amazing. The F1 system is wireless, efficient and fast. If only the hospital had something like this. Well, Dr Adam has worked with Birmingham Children's Hospital to create a new system. It's a world first. It's brand new and I'm going to try it out. Alex, that, that's yes, it now. That's it now. It's flashing. It's flashing. It's, it's sending the signal to the monitor. Yeah. It has one sensor doing the same job as the six that Matt is hooked up to. The results are instantly available on the computer monitor. Bye bye charts. Plus, it's wireless. I can walk anywhere, even do a few press-ups if I like. You're doing very well, Chris. All this time, it's recording my vital signs. Perfect. And then I can download my results when I get back. Even though I was jumping at the other end of the hospital, the computer knows what I've been up to. Well, the hope is that children will be able to go home with this system and they will be able to take one of these tablets with them so we can log on from the hospital and see what's happening in their, ha in their homes. This would be life-changing for patients like Matt. How much easier would you find it if you could just wear that new monitor? A lot. Seriously, I would lose a lot of these wires. It's small, compact, and that monitor takes 60 seconds to uh, monitor your heart. The other one monitors it every second. And I think it'll be great for the future. And then hopefully other kids uh, will find it a lot easier in hospital. Thanks, Matt. Who would have thought that hospitals can learn stuff from a car? Today we're looking at how your blood flows through a one-way system around your body. Morning, Zand. What are you doing? Oh, Chris, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to make a formal complaint about this new bed they put in the lab for me to nap in. I mean, it's terrible. It's not a bed. It's my scientific inversion table for doing physiological experiments on you. Take a look at this. What? <laughs> when I lie Zand down like this, his veins bulge. His head turns red as his head fills with blood. I feel terrible. And he's getting a headache. But ah! when I sit him up this way, the veins don't bulge around his feet. His foot doesn't swell, it doesn't turn red, and he doesn't get a foot ache. So what's that all about? Well, it's all because of valves. The blood flow in your body is a one-way system, and valves are an essential part of it. Your heart pumps out blood to your feet with the help of gravity. But then, on its way back up to the heart, your blood passes through valves, which are like little doors, slamming shut to stop the blood falling back down the wrong way. We'll take a look at this. This is not for the squeamish. We're going to show you a real valve in action. 
This is a section of a cow's leg. You can see here an artery and a vein. And these are a bit bigger than your arteries and veins, but they're basically very similar. Arteries carry blood away from the heart, and veins carry blood back to the heart with the help of valves. In your leg, the blood can only flow through the vein in one direction. And that's back up towards your heart. Let's put it to the test and see what happens when we try to force it to go the wrong way. Can you see the vein swelling up? And nothing is coming out the funnel at the bottom. And that's because valves are stopping the blood flowing through them. And that is amazing. I've actually never seen that before. And I can show you another thing that Chris and I had never seen before today, which is the valve inside the vein itself. We've cut it open and laid it flat. And if you look right here in the middle, you can see two very thin flaps of skin which make up the valve. That flap of skin is enough to seal off the vein when the blood tries to flow in the wrong direction. It is really cool to see how tiny that membrane is when it does such an important job. In fact, it's so important, we're going to show you how disastrous it would be if we didn't have valves. And I thought I'd make it into a little competition. Chris, prepare for the battle of valves versus no valves. I've made two absolutely perfect models showing the inside of me and Chris. Not sure they're that perfect, aren't? The bowl represents our hearts. The red tube is an artery carrying blood all around our body. And this other tube is a vein pushing blood back up to the heart. My vein has valves and Chris's has no valves. What we're going to do is put our blood, represented by the fluid, into the heart and then use this pump to try and get the blood back to the heart, up the leg veins, as quickly as possible. Let's put the blood into the heart. Whose veins will win? Valves or no valves? Three, two, one. This is trickier than I thought. You're making hard work of that, Chris. It's a breeze for me. One by one, each valve opens to let my blood travel upwards. But most importantly, they slam shut to stop the blood from falling back again. My green liquid is making its way very easily and gently back to the heart. It's extremely effective. <laughs> it's not fair. No matter how hard I pump, the blood just keeps falling back down the vein to my foot because there aren't any valves. Without valves, I'd have a huge swollen foot full of blood and nothing would be getting back to my heart. Meanwhile, I've won! With the help of these valves, it's proved extremely easy to get blood all the way back to the heart. The only problem is I'm beginning to wish that I'd connected the vein to the heart. Wasn't expecting it to work so well. Whoops. So we've shown you what valves actually look like and that blood travels around your body in a one-way system, which is why your feet don't get red or swell. And we've proved just how important valves are, because without them, the blood in your body would never make it back to your heart. Now, where's that new exercise oh. bike I ordered? Sand? Chris, these new lab beds are absolutely terrible. I mean, this one has ruined nap time. I barely got a wink. I'm going to need another complaint form. Right, Zahn. Uh, I'll go and print one off, then. It's almost as if he doesn't want me sleeping in the lab. <laughs>